Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Please stand on your, keep standing on your feet. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. And join us in our praise and worship. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just put our hands together. Is anybody excited to be in the house? Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Is there anybody excited to be in the house? Come on, let's put our hands together. The song says, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless his name. He's my friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, can't nobody. Come on, do me. Come on. Can't nobody. Say, do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Say, do me like Jesus. Jesus. He's my Come on, I know you know that. Come on, can't nobody. Can't nobody. Come on, do me. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Come on, do me like the Lord. Come on, can't nobody. Come on, do me like Jesus. Come on, say he picked me up. He picked me up. Yeah, he turned me around. Turn me around. Come on, he picked me up. And he turned me around. Turn me around. Pick me up. Come on, and he turned me around. Turn me around. He's my friend. Hold on, hold on. I said, when I woke this morning, I didn't have no doubts. I knew that the Lord would bring me out. So I got down on my knees, said, Lord, help me, please. I got up and I shouted victory. Come on, say, can't nobody. I said, can't, can't nobody. nobody. Come on, say, do me. Do me like Jesus. Come on. Can't nobody. Say, do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Say, do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. He's my Come on, point to Say, he healed my body. Healed my body. And told me to run on. Told me to run on. My body. Come on, he told me to run. Told me to run on. my body. Told me to run. Come on, he. He's my. Now come on, put your hands together. Come on, just give God. Come on, just give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Cause can't nobody do me like Jesus. Come on, let's sing that one more time. Say, come on, can't nobody. Can't nobody. Say, do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Come on, do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. Come on, say, can't, can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Come on, one more time, one more time. Come on, say, can't nobody. Can't nobody. Say, do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Say, do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. Ain't nobody. Say, do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Say, he's my friend. He's my friend. Hallelujah. Say, can't nobody. Can't nobody. Come on, do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Come on. Can't nobody. Come on, do me like Jesus. Nobody. Yeah. Do me like Jesus. Nobody. Nobody. Not my mother, not my father, nobody can do me like Jesus. Not my pastor, not the government, nobody yes, sir. can do me like Jesus. Hallelujah. Shall we turn to the Lord in prayer? Oh, Lord, our God our Father and our Creator, Thou who knew us before we knew ourselves. We come to you this morning say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring like nobody else can. We give you the praise, Lord. We give you the honor, for nobody else deserves it. 
Because only you, Lord, have made a way for us. You are the light of the world, and you have brought us out of darkness. You are the door who has opened up opportunities for us, and we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you, Lord, for just waking us up this morning. It wasn't the alarm clock. It wasn't our husband or wife. It wasn't the dog barking outside, but it was you, Lord. And we say thank you. We have gone through a pandemic. Numbers are going back up, but you have kept us. And we say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come back into your sanctuary, but also to be able to go out on the airways so your word may be heard. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would touch the one that would stand behind the throne today and deliver your word. Anoint her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet that we may hear from heaven on this day. Continue to bless this gathering, Lord. Be with us, guide us. For if we had 10,000 tongues, we could never thank you enough. We ask for forgiveness of our sins that we have committed by thought, words, and deeds. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, merciful Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning can be found in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis, the 31st chapter. I'm sorry. Genesis, the 31st chapter, verses 26 through 35. And I'll be reading this morning from the New International Version. And when you have it, say amen. Amen. The word says, Then Laban said to Jacob, What have you done? You've deceived me, and you've carried off my daughters like captives in war. Why did you run off secretly and deceive me? Why didn't you tell me? So I could send you away with joy in singing to the music of trembles and harps. You didn't even let me kiss my grandchildren and my daughters goodbye. You have done a foolish thing. I have the power to harm you. But last night the God of your father said to me, be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. Now you have gone off because you long to return to your father's household. But why did you steal my gods? Jacob answered Laban, I was afraid because I thought you would take your daughters away from me by force. But if you find anyone who has your gods, that person shall not live. In the presence of our relatives, see for yourself whether there is anything of yours here with me. And if so, take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen the gods. So Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the tent of the two female servants, but he found nothing. After he came out of Leah's tent, he entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the household gods and put them inside her camel's saddle and was sitting on them. Laban searched through everything in the tent, but found nothing. Rachel said to her father, don't be angry, my Lord, that I cannot stand up in your presence. I'm having my period. So he searched but could not find the household gods. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. From all that dwells below the skies, let the creators praise arise. Due to our COVID-19 protocols, we're going to ask that you remain in your seats for our altar call this morning. We're going to have uh, Reverend, our altar call this morning by Reverend Shirley LaCour. While you are preparing for our altar call, we ask that you would keep those who are on our sick and shut-in list in your prayers. 
and know that we are praying for you and with you. worship of your holy and righteous name. And so, Master, we come one by one and name by name to make our petition known unto thee. But most of all, for thanking you, Lord, for raising us up. Thank you, O God, for keeping us with the right hand, O God. Thank you for your mercy and for your grace. Thank you for your faithfulness, for great is thy faithfulness unto us, O Lord. And morning by morning, new mercy we see. So, Master, we thank you for new mercy today. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you still sit high and look low. Rain all oh, power in your hand, O oh God. And so, Master, as we look to the hills from whence cometh our help, we ask, O oh God, that you would touch us one by one. For you made us and you know all about us. Touch us right now with your finger of love and increase our courage, O oh God, that we might continue to go forth and stand, Heavenly Father. Increase our faith, O oh God that we might continue to walk upright in thy sight, O oh God. Be merciful unto us and hear our prayers and grant us this day thy love and mercy right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for being a doctor in a sick room and a lawyer in a courtroom, O oh God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for raising some of us up off our bed of affliction, but thou art the God who healeth of all our diseases. We ask you, Heavenly Father, continue to speak comfort to those that are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, knowing that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal, O oh oh God. Master, all over the land and the country, although we may have trouble on every side, Heavenly Father, we ask you that you would speak to our hearts right now. Grant us thy peace, and we are mindful of praise and thank you to lift you up as we say yes to your will and to your way. To every church that is open unto thy name, O oh God. We ask that you will be with them right now. And a special mess, blessing to be upon Bethel right now. Bless our pastor and family traveling, oh God. Continue to help me, Father, to lift them up in the hollow of our love as he preaches to us, oh God, our words. But our words are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Pastor, let us hide it in our heart that we may not sin against thee. And we forever praise you and thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. God. Every praise is to our God. Every hallelujah 
is to our God. We are grateful to be in the house of the Lord on another Sunday. Grateful to be listening by radio or online. We're just grateful. We're in the land of the living. God is still in the blessing business. I'd like to give honor to God who is truly the head of my life. To my pastor in his absence, Reverend Shirley LaClure, Reverend Bill, now you know, <laughs> Reverend Bill Hintz, the evangelist, et toi, to my good friend, where did it go? To my good friend Derek, to you, my sisters and brothers in Christ. I thank you for another opportunity to come before you so we might hear what thus saith the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity, this time, this way, oh God, that we can lift you up. We can be reminded that you're still God all by yourself. You have never left us nor forsaken us. You continue to keep us in your care. For that, we stop by to say thank you. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we've already come. But you blessed us. You kept us. You allowed no hurt, harm, nor danger to come nigh us. And for that, we say thank you. Now, oh God, would you let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart. Let them be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Your scripture was read before you today, Genesis 31, 25 through 35. I'm going to lift up out of that verses 32 through 35 in your reading. With whomsoever thou findest the gods, let him not live. Before brother and discern thou what is with me, and take it to thee for discern what is in thine me. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen the God. And Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the two maid servants' tents, but he found them not. Then he went out into Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the God and put them in the camel's furniture and sat upon them. And Laban searched, Laban searched all the tent, but he did not find the God. And she said to her father, let it not please my Lord, I cannot rise up from thee. It is the custom of women upon me. And he searched and he did not find the God. I want to use for a subject, the only God I know. The only God I know. Some years ago, a Motown singer named Mary Wells made a song and she called it Two Lovers. At the time, of the, at the, time the song was really controversial because of the implications that was in the song. Throughout this song, she sung about two different men that appeared that she appeared to be in a relationship with. She talked about the first love that did certain things. And she talked about the second love that did certain things. It was only until the end of the song you found out she was singing that about two different personalities in one man. And can I say today, we like Mary Wells, we have a public God and we have a private God. We have a God we live with with two personalities. The public God that we have is the one that we testify about in public. The public God that we have is the one we profess unwavering faith to. The public God is the one we give honors and praises to. The public God is the one we quote the scriptures about. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. The Lord is my shepherd. That is the public God we serve. For the public God, we put on a happy face. 
no matter what's going on. For the public God, we can laugh even though we feel like crying. Unlike the public God we worship, we got a private God, another personality God. Uh, that's the God that privately I put my trust in. Uh, the, the private God is the one I pray to when I have a hung down head. The private God is the one that I whisper to when I'm walking in a lack of faith. The private God is the one that knows all about my struggles. The private God is the God that knows all about my problems. The private God is the one that has seen me through the worst of everything. The private God has seen me wringing my hands in despair. The private God has heard me crying out. Although, and through it all, I have learned to depend on God, the public God and the private God. It was through my private struggles that I can say, that's the only God that I know. Today, the scriptures you heard in your reading is a story of a woman trying her best to hide some gods. We find the scriptures of a woman named Rachel who, who's going through great lengths to hide her father's God. She went through such straight, great lengths that she steals the gods from her father. She hides the gods from her father. She lies to her husband and to her father about the whereabouts in the God, of the gods. One translation says that the gods were the household gods. So the question becomes, why is she hiding these gods? What is the level of affection she has for these gods? What is the level of commitment she has for these gods? What is the level of devotion she has for these gods. If we go back and we look at the story, Rachel had been hurt deeply in her life. Rachel had suffered many blows in her life. Rachel had been through a lot of things in her life and she had found out that this God was a God she can go to in a time of trouble. This God she can go to when she wanted to cry. This God she can go to when she needed somebody to be on her side. This was the only God she knew that stuck by her when times was hard. This God. Rachel had been disappointed in life. And sometimes when we're disappointed, there's nobody else to help but God. Sometimes when we've been hurt in life, there's nobody to go to but God. When we suffer hurts and pains, there's nobody to go to but God. So when we say, why does she have the level of devotion? Because God had been there for her. Why does she have the level of commitment? God had been there for her. Why does she have the level of love? Because God has been there for her. And I'm wondering today, has God been there for somebody that they are devoted to the only true and living God? Rachel's first blow came from her family. Her father promised her in marriage to Jacob, and on her wedding night, her father tricked her and gave Jacob to his sister and made his sister his wife. That was a blow to the heart. Her father and her sister betrayed her. Rachel was hiding the gods because her heart had been broken. And when family breaks your heart, you need a God. When family get in your business, you need a God. When family begin to bother you, you need a God. Family had betrayed Rachel. And so Rachel found solace in the gods in the back room. Rachel found hope in the gods in the back room. Rachel found love in the gods in the back room. Because what, what they say, all skin folk ain't kin folk. This was the only God she knew. If she had thought her father was a God one time, that was over with. If she thought her sister was a God one time, that was over with. If she thought cousins was a God one time, that was over with. She needed a God. The only God she knew was in the back room. And Rachel was hiding that God because that God had been there for her. That God had walked with her and talked with her. 
speak up. I'm telling you, family issues will have you run to the house of God. Family issues will have you cling on to the true and living God. When they were looking for that God, she was not going to let that God go. You can steal away with the God you have. The God of heaven and earth. When family matters get too much, you can steal away with him. When troubles get too heavy, you can hide him in your heart. You can remember that God has always been there for you. And he becomes the only God you know. Your friends get out the picture. Your loved ones get out the picture. And you can keep your eyes focused to the hills from whence you'll come with your help. Rachel had another blow to her life. Rachel had been barren while she was barren. Her sister was having children. Through that barrenness, Rachel developed a praying life. If there are issues you have, develop your praying life. If you have an issue, Develop a praying life, and God will be everything to you. Am I saying he's not everything to you now? But if you want God to be everything to you, there are some issues out here that requires a lot of prayer. Somebody said, much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. Rachel had a real big problem. And I'm wondering, do we have some big problems we need to take to the Lord in prayer? We don't need to call our friends. We don't need to call our prayer partners. We don't need to call a prayer group. We need to get on our knees and go in prayer about them. Now, you may be faithful. You may be a good singer. You may be working real well in the church. You may be a good, 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 faithful usher. But when problems show up on your door, go to the only God you know and pray to him. When problems show up at your house, go to God and pray to him. Don't let personal issues overtake your life. Learn how to appreciate God so you can pray to God. Somebody said, you remember when we were kids? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. It's a simple prayer, but we get back to praying and we can believe God will watch over us. Learn to put your hope in God. Learn to put your hope in God. Rachel had a hope in them gods. When everything was looking bad, she had learned to look the other way and put her hope in God that it's going to be a better day. God's going to fix it. God's going to make a way out of no way. God's going to be a bridge over troubled water. God's going to be a doctor in the sick room. God's going to be a lawyer in a courtroom. Put your hope in God. Let God be your ending. Let him be your ending. They say something in, in, in recovery. <clears throat> Wait on the miracle. You know what I'm talking about. Soon as stuff starts happening, we just throw our hands up in the air. Wait on the end. Wait on the only God that's been watching over you all this time. Wait on the God that's been taking care of you all this time. Wait on the God that's been blessing you all this time. Wait on the God that's been watching your children all this time. Wait on the God that's been putting food on your table all this time. Wait on the God that's been lifting you up all of this time. Don't run out on God now. Wait on God. Learn to see God as a miracle worker. We done forgot that God is a miracle working God. We done forgot that God is a miracle working God. See, sometimes all we got to do is look around and say, look at me. He turned me around, planted my foot on a solid ground. And if he do that for me, he can do it for you. Let's get back to God being a miracle working God. Will my kid ever get better? Yes, God's a miracle working God. Will I ever get better? Yes, 
God's a miracle working God. Would I ever get financially stable? Yes, God is a miracle working God. Get back to seeing God as the God of the impossible. I got a cousin going on to meet the Lord. She couldn't have any children. She knew she couldn't have any children <clears throat> from the time she was a teenager. But she loved the Lord with all her heart. And you ask about God, she says, that's the only God I know. Even though I can't have no children, that's the only God I know. And she would come to the altar and pray and ask God to give her a miracle. She wanted to be a mother. One day the phone rang. It was a girl from Martin Luther King said, I'm having a baby. If you want it, come get it. That's the God honest truth. If you want it, come down here. She got up and went down and the girl did this here. You know, God can do anything but fail. He is the God of the impossible. If you think, quit, quit thinking God can't do everything. He can do anything but fail. That girl, Rachel, was hiding them gods because God had did some miracles in her life. God had blessed her. God had watched over her. God had looked up. She wasn't going to give him up now. And don't give up on God now. By the time she was told by her husband, Joseph, they were leaving and going to his father's home. She had been married to Joseph, Jacob, 22 years. She had suffered the hurt of her sister being married to him 22 years. She had suffered the pain of her father betraying her 22 years. She had suffered being barren while her sister had baby after baby after baby after baby. But it was a God that dried her tears. It was God that lifted up her head. It was God that let her know that I will never leave you nor forsake you. It was God that rocked her in the cradle of his hand. And I'm wondering today when all else has gone wrong, has it been God that have rocked you in the cradle of his hand? Has it been God that has carried you through from, from place to place? Has it been God? Has it gone on so long we'd have forgot that God is still carrying me. God is still watching over me. God still be got me in the palm of his hand. After all that time, she said, it's still the only God I know. Even though stuff didn't get right, I still love God. Even though I had some issues, I still love God. Even though my body's not working like it used to, I still love God. He brought her through troubled times. And God is bringing us through troubled times. Now this story is basically about a woman worshiping idol gods. But there are some life applications here. Number one, make sure you take God everywhere you go. Make sure when her husband said, we're going back to my father's land, and she packed up her swimsuit, she packed up her little sundress, she packed up the little stuff she had got from Rainbow, she packed that God up. When you, she packed up everything and then she was folding stuff up. Well, that's the checkered pants. That's the red blouse. Let me get my God because he's going with me. I'm not going nowhere without God. And I don't care. Take your God everywhere you go. If you move, take God with you. If you got to go to the doctor, take God with you. If you got to go to the hospital, take God with you. You got to go to the lawyer's office, take God with you. As you pack it up your stuff. Well, I got my toothbrush. Let me get my God. I'm not leaving out the house without him. I don't want to forget him because God is able. When I get there, he'll be there with me. Don't forget to take your God with you. I, I tell a story. Miss Jackson, 
I don't know where my voice went, but pray for me. About Mexican. And, 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 and if you ever know anything about them, every time the police pull them over, they go to jail. I'm going to tell you why they go to jail. Because they have all their burglary tools and their drugs on them. They never leave home without him. And what I'm saying, be like them. Never leave home without your God. Every time you get ready to get in your car, take your God with you. When you get ready to get on the train, take your God with you. If you flying somewhere, take your God with you. Make sure your God go everywhere you go. That's different. I said, first, take your God with you. Now I said, make sure he go everywhere you go. When her husband told her we were relocating, she started thinking about, well, he got a God over there. He told me about his God. Jacob is from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He told her about how, how his grandfather had lifted up his daddy and was going to sacrifice him to the great God, Yahweh. He told her all about how good his God was. He told her about the land he had over there, but it didn't make no difference. I don't care about your God, I'm taking mine everywhere I go. And sometimes people will make you forget about your God. Take your God everywhere you go. I'm glad you got a God, but I got one too. We move around in life and we forget sometimes to take our God with us everywhere we go. See, some place we're willing to take God, but we got to take him everywhere. Say amen. amen. Put God where no one can find him. Put your God where nobody can find him. What am I saying, Reverend Williams? Matthew 24, 43 said, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known what, what watch the thief would come, he would have he would not have suffered the loss. In other words, if you don't put your God somewhere where nobody can find him, somebody come take your God. Somebody come in and tell you about another God and take your God. Somebody come in and convince you that God is not able and take your God. Somebody come in and tell you about a God over across town. It might be a little better looking. A God over there that might be doing a little something different. You put your God where nobody can find him. So no matter who you let in the house, my God is still safe. No matter who I go off with, my God is still safe. Nobody's going to take my God from me. I'm not going to be a Christian today and a Muslim tomorrow. I'm not going to be a Christian today and a Jehovah Witness tomorrow. Because I'm taking my God and hiding from the Jehovah Witnesses. I'm hiding it from the Muslims. I'm hiding it from the unbelievers. I'm hiding it from all the people. Because I'm going to keep God somewhere where I can get to him. I'm right about it. You know how I many people have, have been converted because they wouldn't hide their God. They wouldn't put their God where some people couldn't get them, get to him. Everybody you're around not saved. Everybody you know don't love the Lord. You got to keep your God safe so nobody will take your God from you. The Bible says she sat, when she hid the God, she sat on the God. Sit on what you believe on. Sit on what you believe about God. Sit on the rock. Sit on the fact that God is your rock and your shield. Don't let nobody take your God from you. You put him somewhere where, what is that thing, uh, uh, in the movie where they asked Meryl Streep, where's your compassion? She said, nowhere you can find it. And that's the way we got to be. Sit on your God. Don't let nobody come in and talk you out of your God. Well, he ain't did it yet. He ain't going to do it. He going to do it. He done left you all this time. He ain't coming. He coming. Look like they ain't going to never get better. They going to get better. You don't let nobody take your God. Don't let nobody take your faith. Don't let nobody take your love. Don't let nobody take your commitment. It's easy for somebody to come in and say, you still waiting on that God. I'm still waiting on it. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Last but not least, she stuck to her story. When they came and asked her about the gods, she said, I don't know where they at. 
stick to your story. He's been a way out of no way for me. He's been a bridge over troubled water for me. It means you say, yeah, 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 yeah. He's been bread on the table for me. I'm going to stick to it. Back when I was young, he watched over me then. I'm going to stick to it. Back when I got middle age, he watched over me then. I'm going to stick to that story. When I got sick, he brought me out. I'm going to stick to that story. I'm not changing that story. When I needed the God, he was there. I'm going to stick to it. When I cried my eyes out, he was there. I'm going to stick to it. When I didn't think I was going to make it, God came through. I'm going to stick to that story. This is the only God I know. I'm sticking to that. I don't know about your God. I'm sticking to it. I know about working in the church. I know about giving up on stuff, but I'm not giving up on God. I'm not going to give up on God because God has worked it out for me. God has loved me. God has cuddled me. God has blessed me. God has kept me. God has walked with me. God has talked to me. God has told me that I'm his own. God has made me the head and not the tail. God has let me know no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God has let me know that he that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. I'm going to stick with God. Well, all of this talk about God. Are you trying to say, Reverend Sonia, we don't love God? Well, some people got a God called Nordstrom's. Some people got a God called Ray Ray. Some people got a God called Lucretia. Some of us got a God called football. Some of us got a God called basketball. Some of us got a God called Cadillac. Some of us got a God called job. Some of us got a God called career. Some of us got a God called my retirement. Some of us got a God called our children. Some of us got a card God called my girlfriend. Some of us got a God called my boyfriend. Some of us got a card called my wife. Some of us got a God called the church. Some of us got a God called the pastor. I stopped by today to tell you the only God we got right now, his name is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, that's the only God I know. Mary's baby, Jesus, come down through 40 and two generations, Jesus, that's the only God I know. Jesus, he was my grandmama's God, Jesus. He was my mother's God, Jesus. He was my auntie's God, Jesus. He was there when I was having my babies, Jesus. He was there when my marriage was all right, Jesus. He was there when my marriage went under, Jesus. He was there when the kids was acting right, Jesus. He was there when the kids wasn't acting right, Jesus. He was there when they loved me, Jesus. He was there when they was backbiting me, Jesus. He was there when I didn't think I was going to make it, Jesus. He was there when I made it, Jesus. He was there when I got my first car, Jesus. He was there when I upgraded, Jesus. That's the God, the only God I know. I don't care what's going on, that's the God I know. I'm gonna hide him in my heart. I'm gonna set on him and I'm gonna stick to the story. It's been nobody but Jesus, nobody but God in my life. <laughs> Mary Wells say, I got two loves. I got the public Jesus. I got the public God. I'm standing here in the public God. But you know, when my body is racked with pain, I know another Jesus. Lord, help, oh God. I, I got a public Jesus. I'll go to Sunday school and I'll come to church and I'll raise my hand. But when my kids is acting out, I got a private God. I got another God I go to. 
Help, Lord. I, 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 I got a public Jesus. I show up here. I go to your prayer groups. But when it look like I'm going under, I got a private God. Jesus. I got a public God. And I got a private God. That's the only God I know. The reason that woman was hiding him God is because that was the only God she knew. When her life was crumbling before, God held her up. When family was doing things to her, God held her up. When her body was racked with pain, God held her up. So you know what I'm going to do everywhere I go? I'm taking that God. Because see, if I get over there around the corner and something happened to me, God will hold me up. I'm taking that God because he don't work just in my house. He work up the 91 freeway. He work on the 405 freeway. He work in the west side. I'm going to take him everywhere I go. I'm not going to leave him right here on 80th. When I get ready to leave him, I'm taking him with me everywhere I go. That woman said, I'm taking this God because when all else fail, I could go back and that God, the only one I know, not my husband, not my father, not my sister, not my brother. That God stood up for me, and I'm going to keep him close to my heart. I encourage you, keep that God. Hide that God in your heart. I'm trying to let it go. Hide him in your heart. Let him go everywhere you go. When you go home, make sure you take that God with you. You're standing up to go out to dinner. Let's take God with us. Take him with you. So many without him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. God I know Jesus is real to me Jesus the only God I know oh, yes. the doors of the church are open he gives me the victory. is there anybody would like to give so their life to the Lord this is your opportunity that is why I love him so you can come Give your life to the Lord. Real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why. Asked my husband, I said, why did she steal the gods? He said, because she was leaving her homeland and she wanted to have the God close to her. I said, I don't know about that. I said, because her husband told her he had a God on the other side of the river and she could go over there and serve with him. He said, well, maybe she left it be. She took the God because she was her baby's, her father's baby. I said, no, I don't know why she did it. No, it doesn't sound right. I said, she took the God because that's who she had been depending on all her life. And she was not going to leave what she had been depending on all her life. It was the only God she knew. And if this is the only God you knew, you know, if it's your grandmother's God, your mother's God, and now he's your God, you take him everywhere you go and let everybody know this is the only God that I know and I'm sticking with him and that's my story. Yeah.
Thank you for being a part of the Bethel A&E Worship Experience. There are several opportunities you can express your support through our given ministry by clicking on the Donate Now button on the Bethel AME website, www.bethelamela.com. Reverend Dr. Kelvin T. Calloway and the Bethel family wants to thank you for loving, worshiping, and serving with us. 7900 Western Avenue, Los Angeles, California. Phone number 323-750-3240. Email front office at BethelAMELA.com. Thank you for joining Bethel.